Hi, welcome to our online review for Fisheries Professional Licensure Exam. Our topic is on scientific prefixes used in aquatic ecology. What is a prefix? A prefix is an affix attached to the beginning of the word and serving to produce a derivative word. But before we begin, please click the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be updated. So let's start with the prefix a. A means not, without, lacking, or deficient. Example, which abiotic factor could have an impact on the primary production rates in the ocean? A. Phytoplankton B. Phosphorus C. Zooplankton D. Seagrass Answer is B. Phosphorus Now the question is which abiotic factor? So you have the root word biotic and we have the term abiotic. So we have the prefix a which means not without lacking or deficient. So abiotic means without life while biotic means with life. Biotic refers to living things while abiotic refers to non-living things. Number two. It is the layer of the ocean where sunlight does not penetrate at all. A. Euphotic zone B. Dysphotic zone C. Twilight zone B. Aphotic zone Answer is B. Aphotic zone So we have here the oceanic zones, euphotic zone, dysphotic zone, and aphotic zone. Euphotic zone, we have the prefix U, which means true. Euphotic zone receives good light, and two-thirds of all photosynthesis of all photosynthetic activity on Earth occurs in this zone. Dysphotic zone, or bad light, only 1% of sunlight is able to penetrate into this layer. And we have the aphotic zone, A, which means absence or without, so it means without light, and no light is able to penetrate down to this level. Another prefix is epi, which means above or over, meta, which means between, along, or after, and hypo, which means below, under, or less. The opposite of hypo is hyper, which means more. Question. It is the middle layer of the lake, or also known as the thermocline region, in which temperature changes more rapidly with depth. A. Epilimnion B. Metalimnion C. Hypolimnion D. Monimolimnion Answer is B. Metalimnion Meta means the middle layer. So we have three layers of the lake. The epilimnion, which is the outer layer, which has a warmer temperature. The metalimnion, or the middle layer, which has a rapid change of temperature from warmer to colder. And the hypolimnion, or the bottom layer, which has a colder temperature. It is the surface layer of the ocean that extends from the surface up to 200 meters. It receives enough sunlight to support photosynthesis. A. Epipelagic zone B. Mesopelagic zone C. Bathypelagic zone D. Abyssopelagic zone Answer is A. Epipelagic zone The oceanic divisions include epipelagic, mesopelagic, bathypelagic, and abyssopelagic. These are divided based on its depth. Which of the following is an example of an epibenthic or epifaunal organism? A. Polychaete worm B. Clam C. Sea cucumber D. Sponge Answer is sponge. So we have the word epibenthic or epifaunal. Epi means upper or above. So we have two types of organism living on the seafloor surface or beneath the surface. We have the epifauna and the infauna. So epifauna, epi means upper or above or outside. So these are organisms that live on the surface of the seafloor while infauna, in means inside or below. So 
these organisms live beneath the seafloor surface. Next prefix is sub. Sub means under or below. Which of the following is a submergent or submersed aquatic plant? A. Cattail, B. Duckweed, C. Hornwort, D. Water lily. Answer is C. Hornwort. We have types of aquatic plants. Submerged plants, these are aquatic plants in which its whole body is submerged under the water. Floating plants, there are two types, the free floating in which roots are not attached to the surface bottom. And the floating leaved, the leaves and flowers are found floating on water but roots are not are attached on the surface bottom. And emergent plants in which leaves and stems extend out of the water. This illustration shows the different types of emergent plants or different examples. You have the bulrush, the cattail, and the floating leaf plants, the water lily, and the submerged plants or submerged plants, the hornwort, crisp, crisp and stonewort, for example. Another prefix, the uri, which means widen or wide, and ten, which means narrow. This refers to organisms that can only survive within a narrow range of salinities. A. Urihaline, B. Stenohaline, C. Hypohaline, D. Hyperhaline. Answer is B. Stenohaline. Steno means narrow. This shows the difference between urihaline and stenohaline. So, urihaline are mostly marine fishes, while stenohaline can be either marine or freshwater organisms or fishes. Examples of urihaline is salmon because it can travel from freshwater to seawater during its reproductive stage. And example of stenohaline is goldfish. Urihaline is the ability of an aquatic organism to adapt to a wide range of salinities, while the stenohaline, the ability of an aquatic organism to adapt to a narrow range of salinities. Another prefix is ana, which means up, back, or again, kata, which means breakdown or downward, while amphi, which means both. Question. Milkfish exhibits what type of fish migration? A. Anadromous, B. Catadromous, C. Potamodromous, or D. Oceanodromous? Answer is B. Catadromous. So we have here two types of fish migration, the anadromous and catadromous. Anadromous in which the fish goes up to the river to spawn. Well, the opposite of anadromous is catadromous, in which the fish goes down to the sea to spawn. We have here spawning migration types, anadromous and catadromous. Under the diadromous spawning migration, anadromous from sea water to fresh water. That means it spawns to fresh water, for example, river. While catadromous from fresh water to sea water, the fish spawns or releases eggs in sea water. And potamodromous, which means from one freshwater habitat to another freshwater habitat. Oceanodromous, which means from sea water to another sea water. Ecto, which means outside of. Endo, which means in, into, or within, and peri, which means around. It is the mixture of autotrophic and heterotrophic microorganisms that is attached to submerged surfaces of solid substrates such as plants in aquatic ecosystems. A. Endosymbionts B. Ectoparasites C. Periphyton D. Endoparasites Answer is... C. Periphyton. Periphyton are composed of microscopic or macroscopic organisms that are found around or attached to various substrate. Periphyton can be further classified into epilithon, which means organisms microscopic or macroscopic that are attached around rocks, 
the epidendron on wood, epipelon on fine sediments, epipsamon on sand, and epiphyton on other plants, epizoon on aquatic animals. Last question. A parasite that is adapted to live on the outside of the host. A. Endosymbiont. B. Ectoparasite. C. Saprotroph. D. Endoparasite. Answer is B. Ectoparasite. So this shows examples of ectoparasites or parasites that live outside of the host or of the organism. And we have here examples of endoparasites or parasites that live within the organism. Example, you can fa find anisakis in the intestine. And example of ectoparasite is caligus, which is found attached on the skin or outside of the fish. So that's it. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Bye!